Hello, hi, and welcome to this episode of the Mandy Mayer podcast. As per usual, this is a podcast where we chat all about your health, your fitness, your goals, and also about you creating a healthier lifestyle that's going to lead to so much, so much amazing things. Like, I cannot explain to you what the creation of a healthier lifestyle does. It's just, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Before I get into this episode, I just want to let everyone that listens to this podcast Podcast know that I'm only running two more coaching programs for the year, right? So two more coaching programs for the year. If you want to be part of one of my coaching programs or get on the program and run it through for the last two programs that I'm running, you can hit the priority list link in the caption or in the show notes of this episode. Sign up to that priority link so that you don't miss my email communication as to when I open the enrollment link on my website. It's going to be epic. If you've been waiting and you've de- been delaying and you don't know where to start or you've just been too scared to start, use this as your sign, use this as your opportunity, get on that priority list and join me as we tackle the last two programs of the year. I can tell you now, and this is not me thinking the sun shines out of my ass, but I can tell you now it's going to be a game changer. In today's episode of this podcast, I want to chat to you about the 80-20 principle. I'm sure most of you have heard of the 80-20 principle and you're like 80% nutrient dense foods, 20% fun foods, but how do we really go about, how do you really go about tackling that 80-20 principle? Because a lot of the times that slash in between the 80 and the 20 is quite a fine line or sometimes it's a blurred line. Sometimes you also don't know where to draw the line. So let me break it down for you as to how you can structure, like really structure that 80-20 principle or guideline when it comes to your nutritional choices so that you can create consistency, so that you can see results and progress within your nutritional choices of your health expedition. So 80-20, it's like I said, it basically stands for 80% of your food choices. Ideally, you want them to come from more nutrient-dense foods and 20% of those food choices you can look at sourcing from more fun foods. So maybe more of your calorie dense food. So if we first have a look and we break up what the difference is between nutrient dense foods and calorie dense foods is, is basically that 80% of your foods, like I said, nutrient dense food choices, that's more your food choices that are higher in nutrients and lower in calories, meaning things like your lean sources of protein, things like your fruits, things like your veggies things like your complex carbohydrates. That would be your more nutrient-dense food choices. Whereas things like your calorie-dense choices, so the 20% part of that split, would be more things like, I want to say, your fun food. So things like potato chips, things like chocolates and sweets, and just your things that are higher in calories but lower in nutrients, right? An easier way to explain the fun food side of things is those are usually the foods that everyone tells you to avoid and to restrict, okay? So I think that makes more sense. But at the end of the day, if you really want to adhere to your plan, to your calorie goals, it just makes sense to add one or two of your favorite fun foods into the plan if you feel that is going to help you with adherence. Because what happens a lot of the times if you fully restrict absolutely everything, that's often where the pawpaw hits the fan after two weeks and that's where you spiral out of control. Now, let's break it down. What do they mean by 80% of your nutritional plan, your diet plan, what do they mean by 80% of that should ideally be coming from nutrient-dense foods? Let's say, for example, your calorie goal for the day or for every single day is 1,600 calories, that goal that places you in a deficit. Example, 1,600 calories. 80% of those 1,600 calories per day, ideally you would like to make them nutrient-dense choices. And 20% of your calories of 1,600 calories, ideally you would then look at making them more of fun choices when it comes to your food. So let's break that down even a little bit further. If your calorie goal is 1,600 calories per day, please keep in mind when I use 1,600, I always just use it as an example. Every single one of you are individual. Every single one of you will 
possibly have different calorie goals. I just use 1,600 as an example. So if your calorie goal for the day is 1,600 or whatever it is, you take 80% of that. So 1,600, for example, 80% of those calories, meaning around 1,300 calories per day would come from more nutrient dense foods. And that would leave you with around 300 calories per day, which you can add into the fun box, for example example. So essentially what it means is, like I said, 80% of those calories are going to come from nutrient dense foods, 20% of those calories potentially from fun foods. Okay. And again, just remember that this is a general guideline. If you want to have bulk of your calories during the week from foods that are more nutrient dense foods, and maybe on a Saturday, you want to include more than 20% fun foods, you could then easily use that approach instead and say, cool, I'm potentially going to have a fun half day. And then my other days around that fun half day is going to be pretty focused on nutrient dense foods. So at the end of the day, it doesn't need to be that super rigid way of every single day you need to create that 80 20 guideline for yourself or that 80 20 split for yourself. Over an average period of time, you just want to make sure that you are sort of in line with that guideline. So for example, what I mean by that is maybe a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, my food choices are exceptionally nutrient dense. Maybe 99% of my calories come from nutrient dense foods. Then maybe, just maybe on the Saturday, maybe I've got 60 or 70% of my calories coming more from fun foods. But if I look at it over seven days, my general split will still be around 80-20, right? So again, it's about saying, let's create a way that works for you as an individual. But I wanted to break down what that 80-20 stands for in terms of calories, just so that you can understand that based on your calorie goal, 80% of those calories, you want to bang, 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 hit up that nutrient-dense food choices, right? And then you want to add provision or room to your plan to have some fun foods. And how you structure that is totally up to you. And what I've noticed what works for a lot of people is, you know, when it comes to creating I want to say adherence to calories or not only adherence to calories, but to saying, okay, these are my fun foods for the day. They will actually pack themselves. I want to call it a snack box or a fun, fun box where you know, you've already calculated X amount of your calories per day is going to come from little fun things that you like, or you enjoy having. Then what you do is you're like, okay, 300 calories or 200 calories are coming from fun foods, whether it be some marshmallows, some jelly tots, maybe it might be something like a couple of blocks of chocolate with, you know, those marshmallows or jelly tots within that fun box. Now you know, cool, X amount of calories are going towards that fun box. You can pack that fun box in advance so that either you can, I want to say, go into that fun box throughout the day, depending, maybe you've got stress cravings, maybe you've got emotional cravings, or you can keep that fun box towards the end of the evening after you've had your nutrient dense meals but it just makes it a lot easier or a lot more structured if you know what the calorie breakdown is, where your calories are coming from, and then you plan accordingly towards that. And again, like I always say, the disclaimer I always add is this is not a necessity, right? It's not something that you have to do. It is something that I want to say you can use as a general guideline, okay? And you can put a plan of action in place for yourself based on that general guideline. But like I said, it's always good to have some structure and it's always good to have a general guideline and to understand the split or the breakup or the structure of your calories and your calorie choices every single day. And it's also nice to know where you can source those calories from, meaning, okay, I've got 200 or 300 calories today where I'm going to add more fun foods. It just makes the plan seem more doable at the end of the day, especially if you add in one or two of your favorite foods into the plan. Remember, you're creating a plan for yourself, by yourself, a plan for you, by you, that works for you. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you like I usually do. Keep smiling, keep laughing, and keep being kind to one another. Much love. Your friend who knows that adding some fun to the plan really does help with adherence. Mandy. <laughs>